Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And with the new introduction of SDN Networks for Proxmox 8.1, it's not a straightforward upgrade from 8.0 to 8.1. We do have to do some legwork. So let's check it out. Now, if you've been following this series along, you know that I actually started this series on Proxmox 8.0.3, and I just missed it by a few days from installing a fresh install of 8.1. But eventually, I did say in my videos that I will be upgrading from 8.0 to 8.1, and that's what this video is about. Now, if you guys do like the series of Proxmox that I've been working on, uh, please do me a huge favor, like the videos, share it. It does get more viewers to it, which helps the channel a lot. Now, with that being said, let's jump into it. Now, we're on our desktop of the Proxmox that we've been using for this video series. What we're going to be doing today is basically upgrading this install to 8.1 and installing the packages to get SDN working as well as testing SDN as well. Now, if you are installing this fresh install from 8.1, you do not need to do these steps because it's already baked into the install. But if you are upgrading from 8.0 to 8.1, you do need to do these steps. Now, on their website itself, again, this is software defined network. It does give you a little description of what it is. I personally have no use case scenario for this yet, especially for this type of particular install that we're doing. So I haven't really found the need. But when you are installing something like this, it says since Proxmox VE 8.1, the package uh, will be installed by default. If you're upgrading from an old version, which we are, you will need to do all these steps. So we're going to clear. We're going to do all that. If you take a look at the uh, data center, which is up here, there should be a new option that comes up right around this area. I believe it's right under HA, uh, which would be called SDN. It's not available yet because we didn't upgrade. But keep in mind, you do need to use the no PVE Proxmox repository for this unless you do have enterprise. So make sure this is all checked off and you have this no PVE subscription. And then I'm gonna head over to update and just do a refresh on this. Give this, I don't know, a minute or two, maybe even less. And they'll grab all the new packages. I'm just gonna close this out. Now, one of the things I did notice is if you don't install these packages after the upgrade, you will get uh, minor errors on your logs, but it doesn't stop Proxmox from working. Everything will work just as fine. You just don't have the ability to use SDN networks and you might have that little error message on the bottom. All right, so now that we grabbed the list, all I have to do here, I'm just making sure it is gonna upgrade to, here you go, 8.1.3. So I'm gonna hit upgrade. I'm gonna hit yes on this, 860 megabytes. All right, again, depending on the speed of your Proxmox, it might be a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes to more than that. But we are on a lower end CPU, so we might not, it might take a little bit for me. All right, give or take, it took about like six minutes, I think, on this computer. But now we are gonna reboot our system. So I'm gonna hop in here, leave this page, and reboot this server before I add any more packages to this because we got a new kernel so we might as well just refresh that and then when we go in we might have to add our packages and then refresh that again or reboot it again just to make sure all right and we are back everything's rebooted up times about 45 seconds so we are ready to get this started now I am gonna stop sonar again I don't know why I still have this as automatic boot so I'm gonna go to edit start on boot and turn that off for now and then I am gonna stop sonar so I don't have to waste more resources. All right. So now uh, we have to head into our shell and start adding in some of these options. So basically app update install, and then I have to install this little package over here. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it into here and get that installed. Okay, next I have to add this to etc network interfaces so nano etc network interfaces and on the bottom line at the end you will paste that that little source slash etc network interfaces dot d slash star save that and then i will have to install this package dns uh, masquerade right over here Okay, let that install. While that's installing, I have to do this as well. Disable the DNS masquerade. I'm gonna paste that in there. And then now I have to install FRR Python tools. So I'm gonna copy that and install that as well. 
Now, just to make sure everything's working properly, what I'm gonna do is reboot. Um, I did have to reboot this because when you don't reboot this after you install and try to play around with the SDN, there will be some issues with configuring the network. So just reboot it for safekeeping, just to make sure that the SDN will work the next time we start up. All right, now that everything's kind of booting or getting to start up, we're gonna play around with the SDN network. So head over to data center. That's where this new network is. Like I said, is right under HA. Uh, so there's SDN right over here. So we have nothing going on in this area, but what we can do is now create our new zone. So what I'm gonna do is create simple. Now there are a couple of other zones and I gotta be honest, I haven't played around with this enough to know what all the other things do or how to configure them other than a simple network. So I'm gonna create the simple network. I'm just call this demo and I'm gonna leave this all standard. Hit okay, and now we have our little demo. Nothing gets added to the network yet until you press the apply button right over here. So we can go ahead and conf continue configuring everything until you are done, or you could just apply at each step. Now, next thing we need to do is VNets. Now in here, I'm gonna create something and I'm gonna call this DHCP because that's what I'm planning to use it for. The zone is being demo. That's the thing we just created. And we're gonna create that. And you can see it's still new because nothing has been created. Clicking on that, now I could create a subnet. Now this is where you could give it a IP address. So it could be, you know, 10.network, 172, 192, whatever you want. So I'm gonna do 10.80.1.1 and slash 24. And then the gateway would be 10.80.1.1. And you do wanna enable SNAT or SNAT. Yeah, this will allow this network to get uh, internet access. So you do need to enable that. Now, as far as DHCP ranges go, you could do 10.80.1.100, 10.80.1.200. So you have 100 IP addresses in this range that I'm gonna create. That's all said and done. There are options, you don't have to touch anything here. And IPAM, there's nothing to see until I apply everything. So I'm gonna go back into SDN on top over here hit apply. If there's no errors that occur, I'm gonna let this go. It's gonna create the network, reload the interface, and I have to hit F5 on this area, and there we go. The demo network is available. So I'm gonna go over to my PV test, and you're gonna see a new network over here called demo. Now we're gonna test this out to make sure it's got the IP addresses that we assigned and also have internet address. So we're gonna to go to PVE test, create a CT, which is the fastest way. I'm just gonna do Deb test, and we're gonna assign it um, password. Next, template, we're just gonna pull up a Debian 12 standard. Next, disk, eight gigs is fine, one CPU, 512. Network here. Now what we can do here is actually select the network that we want. VBR0 would be our main interface, and the DHCP is the one that we just created. So I'm gonna leave it on DHCP, make sure it grabs a DHCP, and it's gonna be called Etho1. DNS we can leave unchanged, and then we can confirm everything. Okay, once everything says task okay, we are able to make sure that that network works. One of the things I did miss, which I completely forgot, is when you're in the SDN and creating the zone, um, we're gonna go back into edit, and I forgot to check this box off, which is automatic DHCP. This will allow it to give it DHCP addresses. By doing that and after applying, then you will get the IPAM and then get this address over here. So what I did is I started up the dev test and I could go into root now. And if I do IPA, I should get an IP address, which is 10.80.1.100, which resembles the same thing we have over here in the SDN network. 104 and then 10.1.100. And now we should be able to access the internet. So I could ping google.com and there we have it. We do have internet. Now, if I want to set up a new container, which is gonna be a quick one, deb test two, password, password. Next, the template we're gonna use is deb 11 standard, uh, disk, next, 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 network, same thing, DHCP, and then we're gonna use DHCP. Next, next, confirm. Now after this, I should have a secondary IP on that same network and I should be able to ping each other. Okay, so let's start this up as well. And I'm gonna let that go. Now while I'm still testing the first one, 
All right, I know I could ping Google already because we just tested that. I could also ping stuff on my network. So 192.168.105 and 93 is where my portainer is. And I should be able to ping that as well. So I could still reach stuff inside my network that is not inside the SDN. Now on my uh, Deb12 here, I'm gonna do login over here. And I'm gonna ping 10.80.1.100. And there you go. It, pings the other network address. And if I go back into data center, now I should have two IPs over here as well. And there we have it. Uh, we just set up a simple network using SDN. Again, I don't know what use case scenario is for this particular install that I'm doing. I might not be using this, but it is something that I wanted to make sure when I did upgrade that it is available and I could use it if I need to. Um, the other options as far as the SDN network goes, again, I am not too sure how to operate those. They do have a guide on how to set those up. If you are needing VLANs and stuff like that through that type of network, you can set it up in there as well. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.